I'll tell you about portals. They are gold shipping containers that are equipped with immersive AV. So when you enter one, you feel like you're in the same room as someone in an identical container somewhere else on Earth. You can converse live in full body. You make eye contact. You can bounce around the space. This is someone standing in Herat, Afghanistan, speaking to someone in Seoul, South Korea. We have this began in December 2014 as an art piece between Iran and Tehran and New York. The idea was to bring people into dialogue who wouldn't otherwise meet. And since then, it's really grown. We have 25 of them around the world, across 15 countries. We add about five uh, a month. And uh, we have hired staff of 40 people around the world who curate these sites. So and, and, you know, portals are located in diverse locations. So they range from modern art museums to a tech hub in the Navy Yard uh, to a refugee and IDP site in Iraq and Jordan. Uh, and they're located in all sorts of diverse locations as well. So Yangon. Myanmar, all the way to Isfahan, Iran, uh, to Mission, Texas. And they exist across socioeconomic divides. So we have one in the outskirts of Milwaukee in a community that has the highest black male incarceration in America, uh, all the way to uh, you know, a tech hub in Gaza City, Gaza. And as I said, they're all staffed by full-time curators. So the curators uh, provide, uh, you know, they engage their communities. They uh, work with all the other portal curators around the world to program classes, events, and conversations, and they provide live interpretation as needed. So take a quick step back. So this is our portals community from all over the world. Uh, these are all positions that are filled. Uh, and we really see these portal curators as global concierges. And I'll come to that in a second. So the basic idea behind all of this is that no matter what you do, whether you're working, playing, hanging out, you can do it at least as well, if not better, by engaging people unlike yourself. And the second kind of principle of this is that the benefits of globalization uh, are not really uh, applicable to all, especially those who are not uh, able to, to travel. And you know, even though we're able to connect as easily to Afghanistan as we are to right down the street using technology. If we got a random friend request from someone there, we'd think it was spam or something else. So what, and you know, with chat roulette, you don't know what you're gonna get. So what we're doing here is basically taking local community members, connecting them to other local community members around the world, and letting them all serve as global concierges to one another. I think that's not me, so that's good. Um, now, Portals come in different forms as well. This is Obama speaking to London, Iraq, Mexico, and South Korea at once. We have them at the United Nations General Assembly. It's a lot like the uh, JetBlue thing, except they're permanent and they're bi-directional. Uh, so we're trying to basically build that into public spaces around the world. Uh, from This is a rendering, but just because these screens, as were mentioned, are expensive. But from uh, you know what we can do to create interconnected uh, pathways and really create an, a public architecture that is global because we're integrating the connective potential of the internet into physical spaces. So, uh, you know, we have interconnected uh, phonos, which are basically just acoustic spheres. So you hear the sounds of another place, but they don't hear you using similar, actually, uh, speakers. And then portal stages, which, uh, you know, you could have Beyonce performing in one portal stage to 100 sites and 100 live audiences at once, and then she could interact with them or vice versa, and they could collaboratively perform. Again, these are renderings. We're also working on portal buses, playgrounds, and a whole host of other kind of interconnected spaces. But as I close, um, I wanted to just pause on why we think this is important. Uh, you know, I think engaging people unlike ourselves is always important, but it's particularly so today. Obviously, we have uh, incredible tools at our disposal that can be used to connect us across distance or ensconce us ever more deeply in our own uh, social communities, political communities. And uh, with portals, we are trying to encourage people to think about whatever they do in a global context, but also local. I mean, whether you're connecting two parts of New York or New York to a site around the world, uh, the distances between us are vast. And the benefits to connecting to people unlike yourself are uh, puncturing the stereotypes of others, uh, understanding oneself better, and then building a community or a society where people believe they speak to one another authentically for no other purpose. And that's where the fact that this is in the world of art, that is, it is contextualized as such, is so critical. Because people are coming not for a particular reason other than uh, to connect with one another and build from that a better and more interconnected world. Thanks.